All right, today we're going to build a project Gantt timeline in Google Sheets. We're going to build a very basic version in five minutes. And then for those of you that want a little more sophistication, hang on the line and we're going to upgrade our starting project. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So first of all, I need some dates to match against for conditional formatting. That's what we're going to use to highlight this. So we have a project name, start date, end date ready. So let's go ahead and just build a formula that will do our dates here. So we could do one thing. We could just go like this uh, and one, two, 23, and then we could just drag this across um, or we can build a quick formula that will do this for us. So I'm going to do this one step at a time and I'm going to wrap this as we go. So I'm going to start with the year, month and then the day, but I need this to extrapolate for the year. So I'm going to use this formula called sequence. And this gives me a sequence of 365 numbers, which would be a, a year. So if I do array formula, that will allow that to, to form, but um, that's going to create a one going down. I want to go across the top here, so I'm actually going to use transpose. And then it's asking me to add some more columns. Let's go ahead and add some more here. There we go. So there's our columns. Let me go ahead and select these and uh, make them a little narrower. So let's do something like 25. And then I'm actually going to add another row here. I'm going to copy the same formula, put it here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to format this top row as the month. So let's do custom date here. So let's say it's starting like this. We're just going to clear this out and I'm going to select month. And let's do that abbreviation. Let's go ahead and use Glibri, make this smaller. Center that there. And then on this one, we're just going to show just the day. So again, let's go back here. Let's select day. And there we go. Just like that. Let me change that to Glibri as well. So there we go. Now we have our month and our day. So now we have what we need to compare. Uh, now we'll be able to compare this date because this is actually date to the dates here and figure out where our formatting should be. So I'm going to go ahead and open conditional formatting here. I'm going to pick a green for our project timeline. And then let's go ahead and figure out what our end row is and E. So we'll apply to this range. I'm going to use a custom formula. I'm going to use an and because we need two conditions. We need to know if this date is uh, after start date and before end date. And so I'm going to use E and I'm going to do dollar sign two because this is evaluating the whole thing. And so I want it to change columns, but not the rows. And this dollar sign locks that row. So we're going to do if this is greater than I'm going to lock B three because I want to only look in column B, um, but I want to go down as it goes down. If you need more help with this, I will link to a video on conditional formatting in the comments below or in the description. All right, now we're going to do this same thing, except looking for less than that C3. And so this, as you can see, is already highlighting. We're missing the first and the end, and that's on purpose. We could, if we wanted to, do this, and that would include both the beginning and the end. But we're going to add one more quick thing here before we finish. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to change this formula to a simple if E equals the beginning one, and let's change this to our beginning color. So let's make it a dark green. And then let's do one more thing here. Change this to purple and change this to C for our N1. And let that refresh. And now you can see our beginning and end are highlighted and the middle has this lighter green. As you can see now, you can see the overlapping projects. If we go ahead and lock these here, then as we scroll across, you can still see what project ones are being highlighted. 
All right, so that's the very basics. So if that's all you need, you can log off now. Otherwise, if you want to look at a more sophisticated version, hang on for just a moment and let's go. All right, so first of all, what I want to do here is do a little better handling for these months. So we have these month dates coming across here, but it's kind of in a funky layout. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get rid of this month one here. And let's go ahead and add this. And then let's turn this into a date. So we want 1123 here for January. Um, let's maybe rotate this, maybe change this to different font there. And maybe change the format just a bit. All right, there we go. So now instead of doing this formula, we're just popping the whole month. Let's go ahead and delete that just for now. And let's do something now just populate the month. So we're going to build a formula like we did before. So let's do year E1 month E1 and then we need to populate the number of days in that month. So I'm going to use that sequence again, but I need to determine how many days there are in this month. So let's actually just take that date and then the end of the month for that date. I'm sorry, I got to have myself. Let's do a date difference. Final D stands for day, so that's going to be the number of days plus one because I don't, I don't need the actual difference uh, between, but I need the total number of. And so let's go ahead and do array formula. And again, this is going to go down. So let's go ahead and do transpose. So it goes across and that should do it. So now we have this number going across. So one thing to note is I'm also now highlighting uh, the month beginning where that is. And we're also highlighting the blanks. So let's go ahead and update our conditional format real quick. So let's do this. If E2 is not blank. There we go. Let's do the same thing here. And one more. All right, so now we're just highlighting where we need to be. So now we have our month and you can see it populates all the way to here. So now what we can do is actually just copy this, paste it here. We want this one to be the next month. So let's go ahead and just tie this back. So we'll do end of month plus one. Now this is February. So now we can take this same formula, copy it here, and now we're seeing this come together. So let's go ahead and do some just like gray highlighting here just to kind of show this is being used. Maybe that one there. We'll do the same thing here. Those on blue. Yeah, above the blue there. All right. So now we can do maybe 20 there. And let's group this. So that way we can collapse it. And now you can see we're starting to take some shape here. So this one goes to 28. But I want to leave this flexible. So that way you can just change the date here. And then the next date will automatically populate. So let's go back to January. So what we're going to do is basically take this range here. So 28, 29, 30, 31. Let's go ahead and group this. And then let's just copy this whole thing. And this should automatically go to March. All 
and now we're to the end of the year. So now you can see how we can go across here and see these all line up. This makes it a little easier to be able to grab a particular month or you could take two months back to back and see that timeline there. And this will then allows you to more seamlessly, if you go across years, so let's say we change this to February. That will for these. Let's take a second to update here. So now we have December, and now we actually have January of that next year showing up. And so let's take this one, for example. If this goes into 131.24, now we can see all the way into that next month. So this makes it easy to be able to scroll forward across calendar years. You can select when you want to start, when you want to end. If you want to go more than 12 months, you could basically just copy this again. You can get 18, 24, et cetera, number of months. So let's go ahead and just do this. Let's do some quick formatting here. And you can pick your own colors, pick your own preferences here. I'm just going to use a couple quick things here. Let's go ahead and just format that. And then what I like to do, I personally like to hide grid lines and then make my own. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this up real quick. And then I have these highlighted already, but what I'm going to do is add another conditional formatting. And let's just do this. We'll do that gray. And let's figure out where our N one is here. So NX. And let's do is uh, E2 blank. Let's just do that. And this should hide then the end of the month there. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and make some quick formatting here. Let's do some quick borders <laughs> like that. And we can just copy and paint this. All right, and finally, let's merge this top one. Let's just make it equal to this. I have that there, so now we can just copy this, go across, and then the last thing we'll do is add some background to those numbers. And then for these, let's just do something simple like that. All right, now we're starting to shape up. Let's go ahead and move this down just to freeze that. And that allows us if we want to add more projects. We can do that easily. Let's just add some quick formatting over here. We can do some quick boxing up of these. And we can say Project Gantt Timeline. So now we're looking really professional. We can make that a little narrower there. You can see that now it's looking very professional and slick and easy to use. So one thing to note is that these are all controlled by conditional formatting. So you could add notes in here. And again, we could change this font size here. So we could just go ahead and select all of this. And I'll scroll back up so we can see those changes. Change that to Libri. 
Let me change it down here. We can go ahead and hide the extra. And then you can have your notes in here. And then you could add notes wherever you need to. All right, that is it for today's video. I hope that helps you to be able to see how quick and easy you can put together a project Gantt timeline for your own projects. Feel free to leave a comment below if you experience any difficulty or if there's some other videos that you would like to see. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos on Google Sheets and AppScript.